Lance, this is Addy from Haven. Just went to say quick hello to you guys. Uh, we are, oh, sorry, before I say that, are we live? Yes, we are live. Oh, great, Hi. great, great. Fantastic. So, so um, my name is uh, Lamy. I'm off screen, just trying to sort out all of the uh, logistics. But I'll be taking your questions today. Today I have with me Dr. Ade Buluro, who is the convener of the Haven Expressions of Worship experience. Thank you very much for joining us today, sir. Great. So Good to be here. today we're going to be doing a bit of a question and answer session. Um, some people have been kind enough to send us questions off screen that we're going to answer regarding the Heaven's Expression of Worship 2019. I will be happy for anyone else to send in their questions or to um you know either in the comment or if you look at the bottom of your screen there is a box with a question mark and if you click that you can use that to send us questions and we'll be happy to answer whatever questions that you have today thank you Olaolua for joining us um we'll just wait a few more seconds and see if anyone else will join and time being Dr. Uh, Ade how are you doing how's everything on your end uh well as usual, regarding uh, event organizing, uh, we are a few more, we are about 17 days, if I think, counting down to the event and uh, pressure builds gradually towards that, but it's fine, it's, it's very well, so I'm good. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic, thank yeah. you very much. Okay, so um, shall we jump right in? We've got um, a number of people who've joined in already, thank you very much for joining us. Okay. Um, so Dr. Adi, can you just tell us a little bit about the questions that we have and um, as other questions coming I will feed them on to you. Yeah, uh, great. I'll just go straight to the questions and may I say it's good to have you guys following us on uh, Facebook and on Instagram. It's been an honor serving you, it's been an honor leading you in this walk. Uh, I believe there's a, there's a lot for us going in the future and uh, thank you very much. Just join the ride and uh, let's see where we get to. So going straight to the questions, um, I've got a couple of questions that, I, that we've, tried. we've got a large pool of questions, we're narrowing, narrowing them down to a few that I just want to trash this evening. Uh, so first thing is someone asked us, is it an annual event? Yes, Haven is an annual event. Um, we started two years ago in 2017 with about 15 people. We did it again in 2018 with about a thousand. Uh, the next year, it, twice in 2017 actually. The first one was about 15 people. Second one in 2017 was about 350 people. Last year we had about 1,500 people over two, two sites, Middle Kings and Birmingham. This year we're doing the same thing. We're going over two sites and we hope to hit about 2,000 people attending over those days. Uh, and yes, it is an annual event. So uh, I'm going to go to the next question. The next question is, are there uh, minimum age requirements to enter the event? No, no, there's, there's no minimum age requirement to enter the event. But if you're less than 16 and you want to be a volunteer, you will need a parent consent form. Uh, and uh, also, also, if you are much younger than much younger than 16 you need to come with your parents as well or at least a guardian who can uh, who can support you can stay with you and keep an eye on you so there's no age limit we've got a workshop for kids as well so that's a uh, that's that part then the next question says what's the refund policy sadly we don't have a refund policy uh, the event is just run based on funds internally generated which means that uh, a lot of money goes to make it happen so we don't la we don't have a massive pool of funds to say okay we want to pull a refund and give back to you so i'm sorry we can't operate a refund policy on this one but we promise to do our best to serve you and provide as much um, um, as, as, as much as you can benefit from the conference I've got a few questions coming in online. Do we mind if I just interrupt you quickly to take one of them? Yeah. Go so um, one of our viewers has asked, is Ron Kenoli coming this year? Yes, he's coming. Uh, Ron Kenoli is coming. Um, he, he's coming and he's going to be there in full, full force. Uh, we have been in talks and chats with him for, for years now. And uh, he's been, he came last year. He's coming this year as well. Uh, yeah, so he'll be coming. We've got like a full orchestra doing his, his songs with him. We've been rehearsing the songs. Some of our song rehearsals have actually been posted them on Facebook. 
So have a look at our rehearsals on Facebook. So we're doing a few of his songs. And he's also going to do a conference course when he comes. He's also going to do a conference course. So that conference course will run from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And um, it will be done by Dr. Kenoli, Wale, Adenuga, and a couple of other gospel artists. So, Ron Kenoli will be here definitely. And we're hoping that at some point we might be able to get him to do a video with us as well, like a Facebook or Instagram live video with us. Okay, so going on to other questions. Um, someone says, do, do I have to bring printed tickets to the event? No, you don't have to bring any printed tickets to the event. Uh, what you could do is bring as much information as you can. If you have an email or you got a text from us or the code for the registration, bring it down to us. We will use that to find your information. Unfortunately, if you don't bring anything, it might take us a while to find you, but we will find you. We have all the information anyways. So not a problem at all. Um, and the other question is, do you have to be a leader to attend the worship leaders meeting? Absolutely not. And uh, to be honest with you, we might need to go back to the blue uh, planning table to find out why we call it a worship leaders meeting. We just believe that everyone is a leader in their own place. Um, you don't have to be on stage. You don't have to be on the, to be at behind the pulpit to be a leader. We're all leaders in our capacity. We're either leaders at home, leaders at work, leaders in our families and we are all ambassadors in the kingdom and we represent God in all that we do and that's why we have called the worship leaders meeting because we are placing upon you the responsibility of leadership uh, bear in mind that we do understand that there's a responsibility of a leader and there's a responsibility bestowed on a follower but at this point we have decided to bestow upon people to place on people who are coming the responsibility and the call of leadership and that's why we call it a worship leaders meeting so no you don't have to be a leader in church um, in school or anywhere but as long as you've got the heart for God then please by all means do come down we'll see we'd love to have you there um, the other question is is there a daily rate for the conference no we don't have a daily rate for the conference what we decided to do this year is uh, uh, what we decided to do this year is we split the conference into different themes. There is one theme known as the worship theme. There is another theme known as a workshop theme, and there's the other one which is a, which is the course. That's a conference course. Uh, for the worship theme, that's all the worship sessions, and that's absolutely free. Uh, for the we now have workshops that we run, so there are workshops, there are plenary sessions, and there's a worship leaders meeting. We've put all of that into one bowl. And for that one, we've just charged a little amount, just a small token amount to help us balance up with the funds of organizing the conference. So that one, once you pay that, it gives you full access to all the workshops on Friday and Saturday, full access to the plenary sessions and to the worship leaders meeting as well. Um, and then the other bit is the conference course. The conference course is run by, like I said, run by Ron Kenoli and the other gospel artists as well. It's a one-off fee. Once you pay that fee, it gives you access to the whole conference, all the workshops, the conference course, all the worship sessions as well. But you don't have to pay a day rate. It's a flat fee. Once you pay that fee, then you're good. The other thing I probably should say is um, we are giving group discounts. So if you want to come as a church, a church group, or a bunch of friends, we are more than happy to give you a discount. Our priority is to impact the kingdom. We're not looking at making money here. We just want to deliver as much quality as we can. Okay, so that deals with that. So, yeah. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Adi. I'm just going to come in quickly with a couple of questions that we've got in from our online audience. Um, so, one of the things that um, someone of Facebook is trying to find out is um, Haven Expression of Worship 2019 is divided into three events. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you just tell us a little bit about these three parts of the of, of the event, yeah. of the, the worship experience that yeah. we're going to have? Um, the vision God's giving us is expanding gradually and we're very grateful to God for that. Um, 
when we initially did start, it was it was just in worship with having the worship sessions, and the worship sessions were basically about having an intimate experience with God, an all-out experience with God, where everyone would feel and experience His presence and get to and be encouraged by Him, or be spoken to by Him, be inspired by Him, or be touched by Him, or be healed by Him. So our, our, our purpose at that point is to create an atmosphere for that to happen and that's most important to us, not the camera, not the lights, not the publicity, none of all the fancy stuff. What's most important to us is creating the environment for God to have his way. The audience at that time is God and no one else, not anyone else. So that's good as the worship sessions and that's one thing on its side. Then we took a step ahead to look into what to do after the worship session. So after we have the worship sessions and people have and God has spoken to people and people have written all these things down and scribbled things down, the next question we tend to ask is how do we get the skills and how do we get the contacts and, and the, the information to get these things running? Um, in the course of in the course of my, my life, or well, actually my short life. I've seen lots of people struggle when God gives them a vision. I've seen people struggle with the management, with the getting it off the ground. They've struggled with the finance. And sometimes God gives you a vision and you feel like you're the only one who's got that vision. Sometimes God tells you to, to do something and you don't know that there are other people around that he's actually spoken to and is actually doing the same workings, inner workings with them. So what we want to do is to be the catalyst where people come together and we can all network and sit down, particularly when and we put people in pockets where their visions are similar so they can sit down and get it done quicker, get it done faster and iron can sharpen iron. So that's what we do when we do the workshops. We have workshops like prophetic arts, workshops like prophetic dance. We have... Um, someone coming down, steward is coming down to talk to us about finance, how to raise finance for your charity, how to raise finance for your church group or your parachurch group. He's so going to talk about that. So we have people coming from John Maxwell to talk about leadership. How can you be an effective leader? What are the steps in leadership? What are the guidelines involved in leadership? You know, so they're going to deal with that and trash that out properly. And if you're a music person, we have people coming to talk about managing the choir, doing it properly, how to manage invitations, how to do the publicity. Um, so all, all those things are things that we have a whole load of workshops. I could run through them one after the other, but that would probably take a long time. So that's why we have the workshops going now. The third part of it is the, sorry, under the workshop part is we have the plenary sessions. The workshops are, de are designed to help people with like passions and like visions to encourage themselves so we put people together from people who were just starting to industry experts we put them all in the same room so they can challenge themselves and help share contacts network and help everyone get going now aside the workshop we have the plenary sessions the plenary sessions are designed to serve two purposes it meets the needs of our local community and it meets the needs of the haven global community so what we decide is we take the time to look around, speak to our people, what's going on local in Milton Keynes, local in Birmingham, and also the global Haven community. And we look at their needs and see how we can meet it. So, so this year, we are dealing with um, social media as a tool or a Trojan. So we've got media experts coming, we've got Marshall Dixon coming to talk to us. We've got a um, representative from the local police force coming to talk to us about that. So is social media, is it a tool, is it a Trojan? How can we use it? How can it be damaging? How do we protect ourselves? Um, and that's on the plenary session side. And on the other side, we're talking, um, aside the social media, the other session is we're talking about um, I'm stuck for a minute now. <laughs> so the other plenary session we're talking about, the first plenary session is social, yeah, the other one, sorry about that, there's a lot to say. The other one is social justice, um, social justice and social impact strategies. So we're going to have people talking about, um, in terms of social justice, we talk about job income inequality, we talk about uh, people who've been deprived, um, people who've been um, 
the who had their privacy invaded sexually or emotionally or victims of domestic violence. We identify those social issues and then we look at how we can make things better. What are people doing to make things better? What are people doing to improve things? How do you get things going in terms of if God has given you a vision to get something done in that regard? So, so that's the workshops, the plenary sessions, and then we have the worship leaders meeting. Worship leaders meeting is basically sitting down with gospel artists, renowned praise, international praise and worship ministers, and just rubbing minds with them, learning from their experience, and then asking them questions. It's just an opportunity for us to learn from each other. So I've talked about the worship sessions, I've talked about the workshops, and on the third part is the conference course. Every year we will have a conference course this year we're doing a course which is run by Ron Canoli of the uh, Academy of Praise and Worship. We also have the Christian Life University in America. It's an accredited course. We have other ministers on board as well. So we are going to teach you about praise and worship. We are going to be addressing, it's a, it's a lecture style based course in which you get a certificate if you do make 90% attendance. So we're going to be talking about what worship is, um, why people don't worship, how to get the, you know, how, to, how to song right, how to make sure that you, you engage people when you're worshiping. We're going to deal with all of that and then you get a certificate. So that's what the Haven Conference is about, really. I should add an extra part to it. This year we're also having exhibitions. So we've opened the floor out for people who would want to, um, who would want to put out what they do in terms of the Christian field. So we want to put it out there and then people can come in and interact. The purpose God has given us to impact the kingdom and what we want to do is to see how best we can do it in any way possible. If it's going to be done by the worship sessions, we'll do that. If it's done by the workshops, we'll do that. If it's the plenary sessions, we'll do that. We see the exhibitions as an opportunity for people to just walk around, speak to people and engage. If that engagement is going to bless someone, then it's worth doing. So that's why we're doing that as well. So that's the whole of the Haven Conference in in, in many in, in many words in, 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 in a nutshell, <laughs> in a big nutshell. Thank yes. you very much, Doctor Adia. That yeah. that that's um, that's very helpful. And um, we've got one of our users who's requesting to join in. Yeah. Um, so if you don't mind me taking a brief detour, and we can get a live question from a user, one of our members, Aisha Craig. Um, Aisha Craig, thank you very much for requesting to join. If there are any other people who are watching and you have a question that you'd like to ask us live, Dr. Ade is ready and able to take your questions. We're waiting quickly for Aisha Craig to just come in. Um, is it okay if I run through a question? Yes, now? please, while okay. we're waiting. Good. Oh, I think we have Aisha here. Hello. Hello, Aisha. Hi. Hi, everyone, family. Hi. Hi, Aisha. Good to have you. Thank you. Um, I am just jumping in to interrupt you guys for a bit to say a few things and then I would run along. Um, so I've had the opportunity to um, serve in Haven for two years, three years actually. And this year I've, I've served in the capacity of the volunteer team, kind of helping to recruit people onto um, different departments in Haven and um, I'm just jumping in to encourage more people to join in because we um, we would never stop needing people to help out in Haven and even as the day draws closer and we're all excited um, <laughs> I just want to encourage as many people as are watching who are not already on the team as um, a volunteer to join in and I would say that we've had um, testimonies from Haven volunteers in the past and we still have um, that we have a different people who volunteer I think that the volunteers have a different experience that's a little bit of I'm giving you a little um, peep into what we are or who we are um, they have a different experience to people who just attend. We, you get to experience what the live worship in front and the camaraderie that happens behind because we Haven members are like a big family, loving, um, helpful, supportive 
and we all get along very well. I tell you, if you join Haven Volunteers, you won't want to be anywhere else. I promise you. Yeah. So um, do your best to um, pick on to go onto the website. Um, it's um, Haven dot HavenX dot org, and then look at the list of um, teams that we have listed on there, and then you can click on the form to both register if you haven't already and to volunteer as well and then we'll pick you up from back end and send you a message and you know get you on board it's not too late to join and um you'll be expecting me and thank you dr ade we've been listening to the good news you have had to share share with us this evening and so everyone else in the background are doing the good work I know your lovely wife is there. Hey, your baby. Thank you so, very yeah. much, Aisha, for joining us. Thank <laughs> you for that, that. wonderful Thank you guys. Um, Bye. contribution. God bless you. Thank you, Aisha. Um, it's, it's always heartwarming when people preach your vision back to you. Um, it's always very heartwarming when people tell you how much they appreciate what you're doing and um, how much they're benefiting from it. So thank you very much, Aisha, for that. That's Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So we'll just jump back into the frequently asked questions now, yeah. and we will um, run through some questions. But just for those who are just joining us, um, if Dr. Adi doesn't mind me recapping, yeah. one of the most crucial things that we've said in the last few minutes is about the structure of Haven. And we said that Haven this year is made up of four things. The first one is the worship session. That's the core of what we're doing. People are going to come in, worship the Lord, and pour out their hearts to Him. The second is the workshops where we're going to get people from newbies in the field to industry experts, put them together. We want them to um, learn from each other, feed off each other, interact from each other. And we're going to teach people how to do this thing called worship. The third thing is the conference course, which is going to be run in conjunction with Dr. Ron Kenoli and with other gospel ministers. And here at the course, we're actually going to do like a lecture style a course where you can get a certificate at the end of the day and it's all accredited it's cpd points and it's going to be a beautiful experience for people who are actually worship leaders or church leaders to learn about worship and the fourth thing is the exhibition where we have christian like-minded people coming together to exhibit their works for christ and to get an opportunity for interaction and cross-pollination of ideas um thank you very much dr adi for such a wonderful vision thank you for being a, a conduit of God's blessing to this generation. So let's move on to the other question that we've gotten uh, and we will take a few more. Uh, it, just in case there's any other person who's willing to come in and join us, please send a request and we'll be able to handle that from the back end. Dr. Pulero, thank you very much. Okay, so a uh, few more questions. Uh, how do I know when a specific artist is singing? Yeah. Wow, that's a good one. Uh, unfortunately, we can't tell you when artists are singing, none at this point. It's not usually what we do. We've never planned to make it public when people are singing. Uh, but I can tell you that all the artists are going to be there on the day. But as for what we do normally, most artists are singing on Saturday. Saturday is, Saturday is like the main day. So if you do come on Saturday, uh, you know, you get to meet most of the artists and if they're going to sing in that it's either be during the worship session in the morning or worship session in the evening what we've done is we have an event schedule that outlines when all the worship sessions are so you know when they start you know when they end as to the detailed event schedule who comes on who goes off who comes on who goes off that we have that but we'd rather keep it in-house for now it's pretty fluid it could be pretty fluid sometimes so, so unfortunately we're not going to put that out i'm sorry um then let me see can i update my registration information yes you can you can send an email to regdesk at havenx.org that's r-e-g-d-e-s-k at h-a-v-e-n-x.org you can send an email there or you can call us um, if you go to the website there's, there's a number there you can call you can also go to our contact us page and drop a message there. We'll catch up on it. You can send us a Facebook message, Instagram message. We'll pick it up and then we'll do what we can. Otherwise, just meet us at the registration desk and we'll sort it out there. Um, is my ticket transferable? 
Yeah, your ticket is transferable, but you need to inform the registration desk. Yeah, you need to inform the registration <laughs> desk. When, when you say transferable, so yeah. that means I can buy a ticket for myself. And if unfortunately I'm unable to attend on the day, yeah. can I then give that to my husband or to my wife or to a friend to come? Yes, you can. Um, I mean, ideally, what we would want you to do is you can just cancel the ticket and then let the other person just um, just uh, order the ticket. But if that's going to be confusing, just give us a ring. We'll sort that out. Um, but there are no refunds. So if I cancel my ticket, would I be able to then... If it is a free ticket, you can cancel the ticket and then the other person can reorder. But if it's a paid ticket, just let us know. We transfer it to someone else. Thank you very much. Yeah, I do apologize. We, we can't do refunds because we just don't have the capacity at this point to accommodate that. Yeah, it might be a bit necessary. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so next question. Is it okay if the name on my ticket or registration doesn't match the person who attends? No, please don't do that. Please no, don't do that. If that's going to happen, just come to the registration desk and let's talk about it. Okay, it could cause a lot of um, it, it, a lot of um, logistic problems for us, and it's not good for health and safety reasons as well. Because we just had a training a few days ago, and we put that up on Facebook Live. We need to know who's the number of people and the names of the people in the building for time. We need to know the people who are meant to be in the auditorium or in different work rooms running workshops per time. And that information we're going to have our fire marshals and the fire warden, the site manager is going to have all that information. So we would want to be sure that who we think is in the building is in the building. So it's not safe um, to actually do that. We can always make adjustments for you at the registration desk. Just come to us, we'll sort things out for you. Okay. Um, one question is coming on here. Um, two questions actually. So if okay. you don't mind, I'll just pick those questions off the screen yeah. uh, and if you answer them we can go back to the ones we have already. Okay. So Aishanana is asking, are the group discounts still on? Yeah, they are on. The group discounts are still on. Um, the outline of the group discounts are on the website. You can have a read of them. If you want us to push it down further, please by all means give us a ring. We can even give you better discounts. Um, but that will depend on the numbers. Okay, so we can negotiate that. Like I said before, the we we our vision is not to charge. We don't want to charge every, anyone a dime. But what we're doing is bigger than what we've always been doing. Like I said, we started with fifteen people, then three fifty, then one thousand six hundred, then two thousand. It's becoming big, and I'm not sure if our internally generated funds can accommodate all of that. That's why we're selling tickets. So the ticket is to provide a buffer for us to be able to meet up with the cash requirements. So group discounts, yeah, we would love for you to be there. In any way we can make it possible. We've even got buses that we can make available. So if you have a lot of people who want to come down, you need a bus, give us a ring. We'll see how we can arrange that for you. It's more important for us that you are there and that you're benefiting and that you're empowered and that you're blessed. That's what we want to do, not making the money out of you. Thank you, Dr. Adi. So, um, Sorry, Soraiki, I beg your pardon if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Soraiki is asking, is it okay for other worshippers that are not on the program to come with their flags to dance? I think what she's asking is, if you are a worshipper who does expressions with dance yeah. uh, and flags, or if you've got a group, can they come and just be part of the worship experience with their flags? Absolutely, that's, that's welcome. You're very welcome to do that. Um, however, for safety reasons, we'd like you to let us know. Um, if you can just let us know ahead of time, even if it's on the day you want to let, let us know, that's fine. Um, like I said, some of the things that we, the reason why we want to know these things is just for safety reasons. We need to know how many people are going to be in front, how many people are going to be by the side, if anyone's going to be obstructing the fire exit, and if there are going to be too many people. So we have made arrangements for people to dance, that you're absolutely welcome for that. But just let us know. So what you can do, is you can send an email to creative at havenx.org and that's creative at havenx.org that goes to the creative director so she'll she's in charge of what's the production on the stage so she'll pick that up she'll ask you the numbers and they can work on it that way and if you're not sure what email to send it to just send it to info at ohprime.org sorry info at havenx.org sorry about that info at havenx.org send it there we'll deal with it okay yeah but you're very welcome anyway I, I think that's such a beautiful answer dr adi thank you very much uh, a lot of people 
wondering, you know, I mean, this worship experience, can I, can I come and really be free in the presence of God? And, and indeed, it's open for everyone to be part of what God is doing. Come and express yourself, come in your colorful clothes, come, in your, come with your flags. If it's something that's sort of a bit extra, please let us know so we can accommodate you. But we want everyone to thoroughly enjoy the presence of God on the day. Thank you very much, Dr. Mm. So one more question I just want to answer uh, is to explain how people have asked me about the, the worship pass, the workshop pass, and the um, conference pass, how, course pass, how does it all work together? It's in three levels. If you have the worship pass, it's free. And uh, if you have the worship pass, it's free, and you can you have access to the worship sessions alone. If you look at the event schedule, all the worship sessions are blue. The next level of that is if you have the workshop pass. The workshop pass gives you free access to all the workshops, all the plenary sessions, the worship leaders meeting. It also gives you free access to the worship uh, uh, course as well. And the workshop pass is green. Then on the third level is the course pass. The course pass gives you full access to the course run by the up to the conference course. And then it gives you full access to the workshops, the plenary sessions, and the, the, lunch, the lunch meeting, the worship leaders meeting. And it also gives you full access to the, um, to the worship sessions as well. So you don't, if you want to do the workshops, you don't have to pay for the workshops and the conference course. If you pay for the conference course, and if you've paid for the workshops, then you don't need to worry about the worship as well. Okay, I, I really do hope I haven't confused you, but if you're not sure, send us a message. We'll try our best to clear things up and make it easier. So we're going to wrap up um, in a few minutes. Thank you very much to all the 40 or so people who've tuned in. We really appreciate your time. Um, we know that, you know, there's a lot of things that you'd probably be doing. So we want to keep it as short as possible. But suffice to say that we're going to do this um, regularly so that we can get as many questions um, from people and answer them and also just to keep you updated on what we're doing here at Haven So Dr. Adi, if you can just take one or two more questions and then we'll wrap it up quickly and call it an evening um, Just give me a minute to run through these quite a few. I just found a few quick ones um, Someone wanted to know where they can find the events, uh, the addresses uh, how to get to where they're going. So how to get to all events. So if you go to the website and you click on, if you go to the website and just click on the menu bar, okay, if you go to the website and you click on the menu bar, it takes you to a list of, um, I'm gonna put the screen up here. I'm gonna be really, trying to be direct and take it up here. Can you see that? Yes, please. So if you go to the website and you click on the, so assuming you're on the website now, click on the menu bar here. It shows you all the different options. Doc, sorry, can you just tilt your screen down a tiny little bit? Is that okay? Thank you. It shows you all the options. And this is, if you click on this option, it takes you to the travel plans. So it shows travel plans, bus, train, sat nav, and taxi. So it tells you the address. You've got a sat nav, it gives you the sat nav, and it gives you all the bus stops, all the bus routes that get you there, all the taxi stations are there. It gives you the information for Milton Keynes. If you scroll down, Gives you the information for Birmingham, the station, the bus routes, and all the taxis, and you get the postcode as well. If you do want to know where the hotels are, we've put the hotels there as well. Just scroll down. Staying in Milton Keynes is giving you all the hotels uh, available. Well, majority of the hotels in that area. So, and if you struggle to get a hotel, you need any form of discount. Give us a ring. If we can, we will help you. Our team is more than happy to. To help you out with that okay so that's the last question um we've got here today thank you dr Adi. i've got one question that's coming from orlao lua can i buy tickets on the day and what's the minimum age for a ticket purchase uh the minimum age actually depends on the workshops the workshops we've got i think the workshops we've got have got about minimum age of about five years hmm. four or five years i think so you can pay to get on the day uh we've got we're going to, to make it easy, we're going to have different registration tables. So for people who've bought the registration and they just want to scan and then get on with it and just check in, we're going to be a different table. 
for people who want to purchase and buy under the NBA different table to make things smoother.